<laughs> a year ago, a year ago. So today we have a, uh, our good friend, our uh, colleague from Columbia University, Dr. Juan, Professor Juan Domingo Baena, who will be talking about the homogenization stuff and so on. So, but before this, uh, I think Stanislav Lovski would like to give a few words about the collaboration. I'd like to welcome to the project of the National University of Columbia. And since we have more than eight, eight years of very nice collaboration, so he is our friend and a very good colleague. And since now we are starting a new, new step of this collaboration with, with the new project, I will tell you. I decided to show some five. Uh, because many people don't know maybe about this cooperation, maybe about this, this, this result and main purpose. So, uh, as far as I know, this cooperation started uh, from from Pavel Belov and Alexei from the Jan Yukon supported in uh, 2014 or something like that, or maybe even before, I don't know the history, but it started with uh, self complementary meta services. So, uh, this was the idea to study such structures. By proposed by Juan, and uh, the guys decided to organize uh, serious of measurements to confirm the unique properties, the, the unique frequency independent properties. Uh, so, in this uh, was published in several papers starting from 2015. So, uh, after many of our guys uh, have uh, done such experiments together with Juan, and each time he introduced new ideas. And experiments were made not only in microwave region, but also in direct region. And uh, mostly you can read uh, these publications already. Uh, um, so, the, the, the very final work related to self complementary meta surfaces was done also by Alek Makov, who worked with Juan and Wolverinians, and uh, also this was a joint collaboration with Stefan Machi group from the University of Vienna. And this work was published in physical review X. Uh, also, one was uh, uh, the one who proposed the uh, practical realization of MRI meta surface. Maybe you've heard about it, meta surface somewhere in other topics, but you know, you may not know that one was the guy who proposed how to do it without any distortion of field. This was the idea of one. And we are, of course, are very thankful to one because now it is. Uh, it's had some impact in the MRI community, this new surface, and uh, many people want to do it in MRI experiments and in medical activities. Uh, but one is, despite this far away from this uh, uh, area, <laughs> uh, uh, but Bible also had a very strong contribution to the world. This part, the part of that part. Yeah. <laughs> the MRI machine. I think that one proposed this in 2019. Yeah. this problem. And since that, uh, he hasn't been here. And when he came now, uh, he actually seen by his own eyes the, the real, real meta surface. Uh, this is the first time he, he, he has seen it uh, physically. <laughs> That's quite funny. Can we just scan one with this? Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> we can go directly to MRI. And, uh, and also, there are some other papers that are being uh, continued now and not yet published uh, related to their health and to metamaterial structures, to image region, with Maxim Tomashok, and other guys. So, the, uh, it shows that the collaboration is quite broad. Anyway, now we have uh, 32 applications, including 10, 10 journal papers. Uh, that uh, have come out, and uh, we hope that we can involve uh, new guys. Maybe some of you can would like to join, work with fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I want to say that uh, this is not the first uh, uh, arrival of fun to St. Petersburg. Actually, uh, it used to come to St. Petersburg and it's already not the third or fourth time. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And uh, of course, we also meet in some conferences. You know, it's always attending materials conference. 
and metadata. And uh, so this was another thing we discovered. Now we uh, have a mayor grant which is called Waves in Medical Systems. In fact, it is formally started in 2022, uh, but uh, it was uh, supposed to be the project led by Professor Stefan Emmer from the France. But due to the different restrictions, uh, it occurred that Dr. Juan kindly provided his uh, candidacy to be the leading PI of this project in, in the new conditions and, uh, and uh, kindly agreed to come from time to time next year during three months. If, if it is okay, then one can stay here to work uh, with us and, and further on. So, uh, there are several several PIs who are responsible for different directions of research here. The theoretical direction related to electromagnetic wave radiation and propagation in the body tissue, and also acoustic radiation and propagation. Uh, and few applications application in MRI, application in wireless charging, and application in uh, high intensity ultrasound treatment. So, everything is related to the medical system somehow, including that one, because it is about medical implants. Uh, how to charge them. Uh, and uh, what we uh, what also planned in this project that someone from Bitmore travels to uh, uh, the place of one in, in Bogota in Colombia to spend uh, more than 60 30 days uh, and, uh, to develop and make some new techniques. So, uh, and by what I can say that we needed new PhD students, new students to. Reinforce and even increase this cooperation. And uh, I hope that if you are interested, you can tell us the telephone. It's here up to Thursday, uh, including Thursday. So the three days can come and it's this time. It will be a pleasure to see also to, to pick with you and maybe uh, you can uh, generate even new ideas or maybe you know how to save one back after the discussion. Please be free. To come to his office, which is called his set, which is not far away from here. He'll be there. So, fun. I give the stage to you. But thank you, Jim, for coming. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Stas, for such a nice presentation. And um, Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much to everybody for staying here. Uh, this is the uh, and thank you Pat, for such a nice presentation. Uh, well, my talk is that you can read it on the slide homogenization of periodic structure. Uh, but I'm going to talk especially about multimodal block analysis. I should uh, say that my student, Anna Cristina, uh, was doing almost all the calculations that, that you will see in this presentation. But the, this problem is coming from uh, long ago. Uh, it was uh, my own discussion with uh, Francisco Meta in University of Seville, and um, parallelly uh, also with Pascal Quevedo, who is working in the KPA in Sweden. Well, uh, it has been mentioned that I'm coming from National University from Colombia. My student is also working there. And then let me show you the, the content of the talk. There will be some introduction, as always. And after that, I will introduce uh, some parameters of retrieval. Uh, this uh, retrieval is uh, for permittivity, permeability, uh, and it is using a multimodal transfer matrix method. The, the transfer matrix is the conventional ABCD matrix that engineers know from textbooks. I'm going to apply that method for numerical retrieval of the permittivity and permeability for these four examples. Wide medium, uh, 13 left-handed metamaterial, which is much to free space. Another example is about high permittivity artificial dielectric, mu, near, material, metamaterial, 
And finally, the conclusions. Actually, they are only four examples. The main part of the talk is about the method, the numerical method to retrieve epsilon and mu. Well, first of all, a short introduction. Periodic electromagnetic structure have attracted attention since long ago. But it could be 40, 80s, even earlier. Even you can find a nice textbook like Colin, which uh, is containing a chapter about artificial dielectrics in 1990. It is called Field Theory of Guided Waves. Uh, maybe you know also Bostad's book about microwave engineering. Uh, so uh, this topic of the periodic structures is well contained in textbook uh, for a school. Uh, in the last 30 years, maybe 20 years, uh, we have listened about metamaterials and even earlier about photonic crystals. Maybe periodic materials could be classified into metamaterials and photonic crystals. The difference between them is the electrical height of the unit third. It is typically said that metamaterials have a two wavelength unit third in such a way that uh, materials made with such a small unit third much smaller than the wavelength, can be seen as homogeneous material with some uh, permittivity, some permeability, and maybe some other constitutive parameters if there is some cross-polar effects, maybe. Well, uh, as an example, I could cite a media made of conducting wires. Uh, this is studied by Fendry and others like Maslowski, Ristretiakov, even Pablo Bello. This work by Pavel Bello about the uh, spatial dispersion in wide media. Also, the, there is another example with the split screen resonators media, uh, which uh, allow us to get some special values of the permeability, resonant, resonant permeability. Uh, there is also this uh, very famous work by Pendry in 1999. And this one, well, I have cited it here myself because uh, we were working with this also, uh, also in collaboration with Mary Silverini in 2009. Uh, and there are many, many papers about uh, that topic. Mm, well, let me start with the, with the introduction about the block analysis, multimodal block analysis. Uh, we could divide uh, the methods of retrieval of permittivity and permeability in three group families, group or big families, uh, three. Uh, I'm showing here only the first and the second one. Uh, in, in the first set of uh, methods to retrieve uh, permittivity and permeability, we could find uh, David Smith and also uh, this uh, work by Chen in the uh, group of uh, Jin, Kao, no, sorry. Uh, Congress, yes, that's from Congo, by Congo, completely wrong Congo. group. But paper? Well, the paper is wrong, but then you mean. <laughs> anyway, it's very used. It's very used and it is implemented in TLT, so we have to deal with that. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to show some comparisons with this uh, to work. So we will see how bad or, or good it is. And there is uh, another paper by Guido Valerio published uh, in 2011 about the limitations of these two papers. Well, in the second set of uh, methods, maybe we could call this field averaging, it is basically uh, uh, to solve with some eigenmode solver the eigenstates of the structure by just simulating one unit cell and through some averaging of the fields and uh, through the ratio between the average fields, we can get also permittivity and permeability. Uh, it is published by David Smith, John Pendry in 2006, and, and the third, you know, huh? again, a wrong paper. <laughs> And now the, the set of, uh, this is the set of uh, papers or methods that I'm going to talk now. The multimodal block wave analysis. 
in this family, uh, we have to solve an eigenvalue problem, which is connected with the transfer matrix, with the ABTD matrix. And most of those, most of, them, most of these papers are devoted to, to get the, the, the complex dispersion relation. So we can get a complex wave number or complex wave vector uh, by solving eigenvalues of the transfer matrix. Some of them, like the one by Lukowski, can even give you permittivity and permeability, not only the dispersion relation, but uh, in order to, to get the permittivity and permeability in this paper, they have to assume the frequency dependence a priori, which is not a good idea, I think. Uh, well, they were assuming it is a Lorentzian frequency dependent. Uh, for me, it is too limiting. Uh, this, I, I would like to remove that requirement from my calculations. I don't want to, to use any frequency dependence. And I still I want to get permittivity and permeability. But then the idea is not to use only the eigenvalues of the problem, but also the eigenvectors. I will explain that. Uh, there's another paper by Enrica Martini and Stefano Macchi in 2014. They also get permittivity and permeability, but uh, that paper has another requirement. Uh, the structure has to be made with planar sheets. It is a stack of planar sheets, and they cannot deal with volumetric shapes. The unit cell has to be planar with thickness equal here, even uh, no losses. No losses. Then uh, our collaborators uh, have been playing with, uh, with these ideas for, for the last five years, I would say. But they were uh, making several papers. In now, no of these papers is devoted to, to retrieve permittivity and permeability. They are only getting dispersion relations. Only the dispersion relations. So then the next step is to, to continue with this work, but try to get the permittivity and permeability by studying not only the eigenvalues of the transfer matrix, but also the eigenvectors. Well, let's start with the method. Uh, imagine you have this unit cell. This is a general shape inside the unit cell. We have a block boards. Uh, along the theta axis and periodic boundaries around the unit cell. Where you have the block box, we have to apply open boundary conditions. Uh, we are going to consider waves traveling along the theta axis. Uh, in fact, we can do also some equivalent uh, network, like the one shown uh, below. Uh, there's some kind of uh, black, black box uh, representing the unit cell that can be characterized with the transfer matrix or the ABCD matrix. This is a multimodal problem. So we have a uh, multi conductors uh, at the input and several conductors at the output, each of one representing one of the modes, one blocked, uh, blocked block mode at the entrance for each of the conductors. Uh, well, here you have the definition of the ABTD matrix, which is connecting voltage current in the input with voltage and current at the output. Uh, this voltage is not a single number. It is representing a vector with many numbers, so many numbers as most you want to, to deal with. Okay? It's a multimodal uh, method, so maybe the voltage uh, is containing n components, the same for current. It is also containing n components, so it is a big, big uh, vector with many components. It's possible to traduce the ABTD matrix uh, from the, well, it, it is possible to relate this matrix with the scattering matrix. It is also multimodal matrix. This F11, for instance, this F11 is not only one complex number, but it is a matrix. A matrix. If you are working with n modes, it is an n by n matrix. It could be a big, very big matrix. This uh, traduction from S parameters to ABCD matrix reminds me the Postcard's book 
Uh, there is some formula very similar to this one in both our book, but in, in, in that book, it is writing with a scalar numbers here, complex scalar numbers, uh, because it is only monomodal. Monomodal, uh, a monomodal uh, traduction between S parameters and ABCD matrix. But now you have to notice that it is not a number, it is a matrix. And the, the algebra to get this, this formula is not difficult, it is a straightforward, but it's not uh, in any textbook, at, at least. I, I haven't seen in any textbook. But they look very similar to the one published in, in, in Bothar's book, in the monomodal version. Well, in that formula, we can see uh, some impedance matrix like this. Uh, P means four. This is uh, containing all impedances of the modes at the port. Uh, let me describe how is this matrix. This is a diagonal matrix containing impedances for transverse electric and transverse magnetic modes. And N refers to the components of the wave vector. Uh, these modes are block type modes. It means that they, they have to be in accordance with the periodic boundary conditions. Then the wave vector of those modes can be written like this. And you see how uh, it is in accordance with the periodicity along the x axis, along the y axis. And then if, uh, the wave vector has to satisfy some uh, dispersion relation, uh, let's say in free space, we can also get uh, the theta component of the wave vector for the DE and then modes of the block, blocked ports like this. With this formula. And these are also well known formulas for impedance of transverse electric and impedance for transverse magnetic uh, modes. Okay, then uh, let's come back to the subaditive matrix again. But before we can use the block theorem in order to relay the field at the output, output, sorry. Uh, Yes, at the yeah, they, they are the two ports, port number one, port number two, and they could be related uh, through this uh, phase uh, shift. Uh, it is basically the blocks uh, theorem or block forget theorem, and then we can replace the the voltage and currents at the output port uh, with uh, this expression. Basically, we will have an eigenvalue problem like this. So it is only to put, uh, what you have to do is to replace V2 and I2 with uh, V1, I1, and some exponential. And then you, you have some, uh, some problem like this, which is an eigenvalue problem. From the eigenvalues, you can get the block weight number. You solve eigenvalues, then you have the complex block weight number, which is containing the phase constant, the attenuation constant, and so on. But where is the permittivity and permeability? One thing that you can get is, is the eigenvalues, but also you can get the eigenvectors. Uh, I would like to, to demonstrate that the uh, permittivity and permeability are related with uh, eigenvectors. I will need to, to calculate also the eigenvectors. Well, let's expand the mesoscopic electric field well, I, I should explain why mesoscopic. It is not microscopic because microscopic field is at the level of atoms and molecules. Mesoscopic field is at the level of uh, our ideal structure made with perfect electric conductor, dielectrics, small pieces of something. A macroscopic field will be the average, uh, maybe the conventional average like this in the unit cell. So we, we have mesoscopic field, macroscopic field, which is the uh, average inside the unit cell. For the mesoscopic field, I will uh, skip to, to, to tell you something about microscopic field because uh, uh, atoms and molecules are very far from my interest now. Uh, we could expand the mesoscopic field like this in terms of the block modes. 
You see how, and you think all the block modes, uh, this summation is from n equal to minus infinity to graph infinity, all the integer numbers. Uh, if I introduce this uh, averaging, it is clear for me that only n equal n equal zero is going to survive after the averaging. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm not considering all the block modes here. Uh, all block modes are there, but after the averaging, you can see how uh, the averaging of this function is going to be zero because this is a periodic function. Uh, sometimes it is positive, sometimes it is negative. When you integrate along x from x equals zero to, to the period, then it will be removed at uh, least and x equals zero. So after the averaging, you keep only n and n equals zero. Yes? Yeah. Could you explain why, why you average the fields? Because uh, if you measure something, right, some response from the material, you always measure second moments, not the first. So averaging is also, uh, it seems to me, should be done regarding the second few moments, not the first. What is the mathematical foundation of this average? Actually, uh, it could be averaged in several ways. For instance, uh, Maybe it yeah, I mean, I mean, is it proven that field averaging gives you correct result when you measure the second moments in the experiment? Mm, well, the thing is that we want to. I, I, yeah, I'm not a specialist. I'm just wondering how it works. Yes, at the end we want to to use microscopic macro equations. So uh, it is possible to define uh, the macroscopic field in many different ways. At the end, we, we have chosen this one because it is the most easiest way to, to define the average, but not the only one. And uh, we want to work with microscopic mass wave equations. So uh, we need some, some microscopic field. Yeah, maybe I can reformulate. Uh, you, you already found your, your first, your first, uh, first second, and several main modes of the structure. Yes, why do you have you, you already know everything about it. Uh, I need the averaging because at the end, I will have only the microscopic fields. But at the same time, I need higher order modes because I need to keep the coupling between very near neighbors. Okay. But, uh, but at the end, that coupling is going to be higher some way. So I, uh, uh, and by the way, uh, uh, I'm thinking the infinitely periodic structures, so no way to measure inside. At the end, we are going to measure very far. And I'm interested in the effective permittivity and permeability of the structure. Very far from the structure, you cannot see the, the, the tiny details of the higher order modes, but those higher order modes are important for coping between them. That's why uh, I understand your, your question, but we are not going to measure inside very far from the. And maybe for the previous slide, I don't know, maybe I'm too hasty, but um, I usually, for example, I, I, I know such kind of methods in optics, and usually if you are trying to do with several first uh, uh, modes and you are trying to find the eigenvalues, uh, the matrix is very poorly conditioned because I mean, why would go to zero exponentially fast? Do you have such problems in the calculations? I think something similar. Uh, our first problem is that we have many eigenstates. Because yeah, yeah, I mean, well, if you're trying to calculate, for example, uh, T matrix from F matrix, or you are trying to solve such an eigenvalue problem, it is extremely poorly conditioned. So, did you face numerical errors? And, and so on. Not big problems. No. We didn't find a big problems. Our worst problem was how to how to choose between among a huge quantity of eigenstates because we need some way to to choose what of the eigenstates is the most significant. But uh, but. 
we don't find uh, big problems with numerical errors uh, uh, or some indefined amounts. Okay, let's continue. Okay, after the averaging, uh, we get this uh, this formula. Only the the thermal order modes are contributing to the microscopic field. We were expecting that. And now, since a uh, thermal organ mode is the only one contributing to, to, to our microscopic field, then it, it could be good to, to have an idea from this sketch. This is the, the case of the transverse electric wave. There is some relation between the current. Uh, you could see this current like uh, the equivalent current uh, uh, flowing uh, on top or bottom of the unit cell, this is equivalent current, entering to the pole. Well, it could be entering to the pole or getting out from the pole. Uh, and there is some connection between the current entering or going out the pole uh, with the uh, magnetic field. Another important connection is between the voltage, uh, between the top and bottom at the pole, and the electric field of the mode. So the, these two relations are pointed here. Magnetic field is proportional to the equivalent current. Electric field is proportional to the voltage. Uh, you see how Px or Py are the periodicity along x and y axis. This is the case for the transverse magnetic uh, mode. In the transverse magnetic mode, the electric field is along the x direction, while in the DE, it is along the y direction. So uh, it is very similar to say x and y polarization. This is the y polarization, this is the x polarization. So when you are telling TE, you could think it is the y polarization, the n is the x polarization. And uh, well, here we have the connection between voltage and electric field. Uh, current and magnetic field. So the previous, if we replace these formulas in the previous formula, then we get uh, this ele macroscopic electric field and macroscopic magnetic field. Why I want to write this in terms of voltage and currents? Because I want to use the ABCD matrix, and the ABCD matrix is relating voltage and currents, no, not electric field and magnetic field. So I need some, some traduction between them. OK, now let's assume that the, the unit head is much smaller than the wavelength. Then block waves can be seen approximately as planes, like this. Actually, uh, they, they, they should be block waves, but uh, approximately very similar to plane waves. This is the the block wave vector here. And let's assume that Faraday's and Ampere laws uh, can be used. This is a Faraday law, which is containing permeability tensor. This is the Ampere Maxwell law, which is containing permeability tensor. Even we can write the Helmholtz equation very easily, like this. It is not easy that. Published in many textbooks. And uh, well, since we are studying only propagation around the theta direction, this is a, a important restriction. We are going to, to get information only about the transverse components of permittivity and permeability. We cannot expect epsilon theta theta because we are studying only waves propagating around the theta direction. So we are going to see epsilon x, epsilon y, but not epsilon theta. The same for uh, transverse uh, permeability tensor. And this is the same Helmholtz equation of about, well, maybe I move a little bit the term uh, just to avoid the inversion of permittivity and permeability, but it is basically the same equation as above. So from this equation, I'm expecting uh, two different eigenvectors. Okay, at the beginning, I told that uh, we are solving a multimodal problem, multimodal. Uh, so I could be working with uh, n modes, and n could be a very big number, like 100 if you want. 
or 1,000, uh, then how many eigenvectors I could have to n? To n, because my matrix, my ABCD matrix is 2n by 2n. Dimensions are very big, so I will have many eigenvectors. How can I choose only two eigenvectors? This is an eigenvalue equation also. I'm expecting something similar for this, as long as the structure can be seen as a homogeneous material. Then, if it can be seen as a homogeneous material, there should be some Helmholtz equation. The weight vector has only two components, so the dimension of my space is two. I could get only two eigenvectors, but I have many eigenvectors. Then I will choose only the two fundamental eigenvectors. I will call fundamental uh, fundamental weights to those with the low attenuation constant. In fact, we are going to find many, many eigenstates, but uh, most of them has very high attenuation constant. I will remove all those eigenvectors and I will keep only those with very low attenuation constant, the two with the lowest ones, which are the most significant because they can propagate easily. And some of the eigenvectors can propagate. Sometimes you can find two eigenstates that propagate, but uh, some of them is attenuated. But I will choose the less uh, attenuated one. Okay, once I have clear idea about my fundamental waves, fundamental block waves, then I can take the Faraday law or the Ampere law and write in this way, what well, you can see how uh, the Ampere's law is the first column and the first column here. This some super index, which is called one. It, it means the first fundamental block wave. I was telling you that I'm going to shoot only two fundamental block waves among many others. Uh, and this is the second one. So you can stack the, the equation, the Faraday equation for the first, maybe this, together with this, it's only one Faraday equation for one fundamental mode. The other fundamental mode is called the second one. But you can stack together the two equations in one single equation. Then it is a square matrix. And if you are lucky and this matrix is not singular, then you can invert the matrix, multiply on the opposite side, and then you solve permeability. The same story with the Ampere Maxwell law. You can write Ampere Maxwell law for the first fundamental block mode after for the second one and pack them together in such a way that if this matrix is not singular, then you can solve the transfer permitted. The same for the impedance. Well, I have to say that impedance is defined in several different ways. Sometimes it is defined like this. Other times it is E equal theta multiplied by uh, K hat cross H. Uh, if I choose this way, then uh, the anti diagonal components of the impedance matrix are the important one in the case that there is no cross polar reference. But if I choose to put here a cross product with the, with the weight vector in, in front of H, then they will be the important ones. When there is no cross polar effect. Well, I, I have chosen this way. It is only a definition. So uh, maybe it's more clear if I go to the end of the slides. Uh, let's say that we have some mirror symmetry in the geometry, just to make it easier. And then uh, transfer permittivity will be a diagonal matrix. Transfer permeability will be also diagonal because there is no cross polar effects when you have some mirror symmetry. And then for it is for x polarized x polarized waves, y polarized waves. Uh, well, the, they are very well known formula for the dispersion relation and the impedance uh, for x polarization, and this is for y polarization. So there is some connection between. Uh, K and theta with epsilon and mu. 
If you want, you can use these formulas, but my advice is to use those formulas better because when you are trying to use this formula, you have to make some tracking of the of the modes. You have to differentiate between the X and Y polarizations. Uh, sometimes it is not uh, uh, easy because if you have uh, solved eigenstates uh, with your transfer matrix, uh, and then you have to see what of the eigenstates belongs to X polarization, what, what belongs to Y polarization, and it has to be done almost manually. In this case, if you try to use this formula instead of the formula below, uh, it's very automatic. It doesn't matter if you are placing here the X polarization or Y polarization. It doesn't matter. It could be X polarized, Y polarized, or Y polarized and X polarized. And in any case, you will get the, 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 the same uh, permeable uh, points. But uh, my impression is that actually what you are doing here, you effectively try to, if you consider a very general situation, then you want simply to cut by all the spatial dispersion effects so that your system can be restricted to only two parameters. But uh, you, you, you just article, you just select the two uh, first modes, right? Yes, it, it, that's equivalent to cutting off all the hierarchy vector contributions if you do standard spatial dispersion analysis. But in this way, do you have any tool to measure to what extent your approximation is close to the real system? Or I probably can ask it in a different way. When you do this, would that result? in an attempt to squeeze everything mathematically into epsilon and me. I think we're going to see that. Correct, or you simply would genuinely obtain the first two terms and then the rest is simply ignored. What would happen if you have a structure with non-negligible space version? Yes, I think the method is uh, working well without the spatial dispersion. But some way it, it is also working when you have a spatial dispersion. If you contain yourself uh, uh, in the study of one uh, single direction of propagation, as far as you don't change the direction of propagation, uh, the effective parameters will work also, also when the when the spatial dispersion could be present. But if, if you are using only one direction of propagation, you will not know that. So, so and the idea is that because uh, if you have special dispersion, you can have some terms proportional to the higher, higher powers. You know. But when you approximate uh, your main mode, main layer, you have the error of the same order. So you cannot distinguish between special dispersion and the error. Yeah, that's what I would bring in this case. But, mm -hmm. In any case, I'm going to show some, uh, some validation. And um, those validations will tell us something about the, the validity of the numbers. Okay, let me tell something about the, uh, how to classify the four modes in order, but I, I think it is uh, quite natural. Uh, some of the modes has uh, smaller, other ones has bigger cutoff frequencies. You, you have to take into account first the uh, ones with the lowest cattle uh, frequency because they are less attenuated, and after the ones with the highest uh, or with the higher with the higher uh, cattle frequency because they are more attenuated. Like this table, imagine that we have for instance, imagine that we have periodicity along x and y equal. Then this is the formula for the cutoff frequency, which is depending on n and n. And then uh, we can take before than any other, uh, zero and zero, but after zero and one, 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 zero, two, well, you know, uh, in order, in order, because they are the less uh, attenuated, they are the most attenuated in this list. So we, we are going to take them in order, increasing the set of modes just to study the possible convergence of our method, or maybe there is no convergence. I hope there is some convergence. Uh, well, let me summarize the method. Uh, uh, at the beginning, 
Uh, we do some numerical simulation of the unit cell by using block ports. We get the uh, multimodalized matrix. Uh, we traduce the multimodalized matrix to the multimodal ABCD matrix. We solve the eigenvalue problem. From eigenvalues, we will get the dispersion relation with a complex weight number. And from eigenvectors, we can get not only permittivity tensor, but also permeability, uh, sorry, impedance tensor, permittivity tensor, and permeability tensor. I wrote here before theta because we are going to use theta uh, to study the convergence of the method. Theta is giving you the ratio between electric and magnetic field. Sometimes it's difficult because, it, 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 well, you have to imagine that our, our eigenvector has many components. Each time that you increase the number of modes, new components will appear in the eigenvector. So it's difficult to, to define a normalization of the eigenvector. And it is difficult to observe the, the convergence of the eigenvector. Instead of observing the convergence of the eigenvector, we decided to observe the convergence of impedance, which is the ratio between components of the same eigenvector. Uh, okay, now validation. To validate our results, we are going to use very well known formulas uh, about the, the transmission coefficient, reflection coefficient for some slab uh, with thickness equal D, some. Uh, Mm, uh, relative impedance, relative to the free space impedance. So this, this is a well-known formula. Imagine that you have the structure with two or ten layers of thickness, the actual structure, and then with our method, you are going to retrieve permittivity and permeability. Why not? You can try uh, to get a transmission and reflection through a homogeneous slab, not the actual slab, but a homogeneous one, with that permittivity and permeability. This is uh, these are the formulas that you, uh, that you will have to use. Uh, so we have numerical simulation of the actual ether structure and some calculation with permittivity and permeability using those formulas. We are going to see if they agree or not. Uh, in most of the cases, we have validated the results. Uh, I would say, well, in all cases that I'm going to show. Let's start with uh, the first example. This is a uh, wide medium. Uh, in the slide, you can see uh, the unit cell. Uh, this is a strip, metallic strip made of copper with uh, finite conductivity. So we have losses in this case. Uh, the period is equal to six millimeter. Uh, Actually, the fundamental period along the y-axis is zero because uh, it is an uh, infinitely long metal strip. And there is some very small thickness for the metal strip. Uh, OK, it is uh, the dispersion relation is here. Actually, we have uh, attenuation constant on the left side, uh, phase constant on the right side. It, most of the time, we are calling this personal relation to this figure. Uh, it is compared with the CST eigenmode solver, but uh, in the case of CST eigenmode solver, uh, it is using perfect electric conductor instead of copper. Uh, our lines here, the solid black line and the dashed uh, line, corresponds to finite conductivity, copper. Uh, you see how the dispersion relation looks very similar in both cases. But uh, eigenmode solver in PSC is unable to give you the attenuation constant. We can get attenuation constant here for the white polarized waves. You see how there is some important attenuation constant in the stop band. Uh, you have a stop band from 0 gigahertz to 12 point something tera, sorry, gigahertz. And then you have some big attenuation constant for that range of frequency. Uh, in the case of electric polarization, well, uh, this means uh, electric uh, field vector is almost orthogonal to the Y, so the structure is not responding basically. So the dispersion relation looks like the uh, like the one of the three F very similar. It is not exactly the pen because the the width of the metal field uh, is not zero. So the electric field, at some moment, the electric field uh, directed along the x-axis 
is a tangent to the meta, to the metal strip, but uh, the response is quite uh, quite low. Mm, the interesting response is for wide polarization with electricity along the wire. Okay, what about the impedance? Here you have the impedance for the wide polarized waves. Uh, we have observed that in this case, two modes are enough to get convergence. Only two modes. It, it is like the monomodal case. One mode is for X polarization, the other one is for Y polarization. It is basically a monomodal case. And then it converges. And this is because wires are not very close. If we pack them much closer, it could change. I will show you some results about that. But before that, I will show permittivity. Uh, you know that uh, it is like a plasma, uh, effective plasma. So we were expecting some permittivity, which is achieving zero at some plasma frequency and negative below the plasma frequency, but positive uh, above the plasma frequency. There is some deviation uh, with respect to the Lorentzian cube. Uh, because uh, 25 gigahertz is close, is close to the to the beginning of the stop band for this structure. But apart of this deviation, uh, this formula for, for plasma, artificial plasma, is uh, very good in agreement, or very well in agreement with the results that, that we have obtained. Actually, we are comparing also with a changed paper by Gong Group. Uh, it was the paper that you said uh, it is part. Yeah. But they are giving a good result for this case. It only gives you one of the parameters. But if something is wrong with the other parameter, wrong. But one of them can be exactly correct. Yes. In this case, it is correct. Uh, even for the case of the, the permeability, which is shown here, this is permeability for Y polarization. But it, it is called mu XX because magnetic field is along the x-axis in this case. And you see how there is some uh, permeability, which is not exactly the permeability from free space. Uh, we are able to calculate also uh, that permeability in agreement with Chen's paper. But in this case, it is working. I mean, Chen's paper is working because uh, metal strips are not very close. Once they are much closer, uh, Chen's paper is going to fail. We can get also the imaginary part of permeability and permittivity, and they again agree with the with the chain with the chains to be uh, This is uh, the validation. Validation in the vertical axis, you have reflection or transmission, magnitude of reflection or transmission. Uh, here above, you have the phase of reflection and transmission coefficient. Uh, for two layers, so this is very thin structure, or 10 layers, and we can observe that the agreement is very good in any case. And we are using only two modes, two modes uh, in this case. No need to, to make a multimodal study. Yes, with monomodal study is enough. I, I don't want to confuse you. I say monomodal and two modes. One mode for X polarization, one mode for Y polarization. There is some mirror symmetry in the structure, so you can deal with those two modes separately and solve in monomodal way. What about if we make the unit cell uh, much shorter along the theta direction? Then the two modes are not going to be enough. Uh, we see how, for the case of n equal to, it means two modes, the dispersion relation, where in this case it is the attenuation constant alpha. Uh, for two modes, uh, we get this cure. For 10, 18, 26, we get a different cure. Uh, this is the beta, the phase constant, or the dispersion relation. Then we, we, we can observe how AMO solver in TST is given the same result as we are obtaining. But if you try to use N equal to, it is not enough. There's some deviation. A small deviation. Actually, uh, it is easier to observe deviations uh, in a generation constant. 
or in impedance. This is uh, above, you have real part of impedance, imaginary part of the impedance, and you see again how n equal to is giving us some, uh, some mistake, some frequency shift. Curves look very similar, but with some frequency shift. This is permittivity. I have to have permittivity the same again. N equal to is not enough. N equal 26 is good. But uh, here it is interesting to see the comparison with the Shen paper. When we are using N equal to, it means only two modes, the two propagative um, block modes, only the two propagative ones, I mean PE00 and PM00, then we get the same as Shen. But if we increase to n equal to 26, we get something new. And it has already converged. Oh, but for this particular structure, do you need both the T and the TM? I thought you apply uh, the field was only in one direction. Or for some equation like that, or, or, or not? Both directions. We are playing with T and TM uh, modes, the whole set. And we get everything, but we are showing only uh, for white polarization. Okay. I'm showing only white polarization, but we have got also the X polarization. Just for simplicity. Oh, in, in event here, but it's a polarization, it's not just one mode. No, not. We need more than one mode in this case. When you say N equal to, maybe to say N equal one. Because yes. uh, the other in case. Yes. Okay. Because it doesn't mean it is a final one to one. One first higher than one is the No, you use yeah. a propagating mode. It says N equal to, but it is more <laughs> Because effectively, you can separate X and Y for our in this case. And finally, the question sorry, maybe now I am missing your point entirely. My impression was that you said that in order to describe the language of permittivity and variability, you only want to select two modes. Yes, but now you say you will use up to 26 modes and you still yes. have the parameters. Yes, uh, these 26 modes means the, the modes have the four. You have four ah, modes. Four right? modes, which you have. Yeah, four modes. And uh, on one hand, you have four modes, which belong to, to the block floquet port. Let's say if you are working with DST, it, it is the same as the, the port modes in CST. Uh, but on the other hand, you have uh, many block modes that you have calculated by solving the eigenstate problem or the eigenvalue problem, which are not the same. Okay. Uh, that's the they are they result to the structure, yeah. to the periodic structure. And from those many eigenstates of the periodic structure, you have to choose only the two fundamental ones, which are the most important. But since you have many, if you have uh, uh, if you have used 26 or for the case of 26 at the point, uh, they are 26 for modes. But then your problem, the problem that you have to, to solve with eigenvalues and eigenvectors has a matrix which is uh, 52 by 52. It means that you have 52 up to 52 uh, eigenstates, but you are expecting only two because you have homogenized structure, uh, which is supporting only uh, two transverse waves, only two. And you see, you still get the same parts in intermediates, and if you could look at the image of your parts, you see that you observe something which should not happen, and you just observe this corresponding to. Uh, which are the five intermediates? Yeah, at the, the beginning, at low frequency, at small frequency. No, 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 for the imaginary part. Okay. This yes. is, yeah, there is something strange. Actually, Chen method is giving us that strange thing, but numbers are small, 10 to minus 4. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it is due to the fact that in this range, it is not describable by the parameters. And that reflects. Well, it's just numerical problem. I think it's very small, and if you divide them, it's just numerical solutions. Like in uh, optical resonance, when you extract all this, it's some rubbish. Right. This is zero order, zero order, but you also can get this numerical. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
Well, I'm getting, can, can I ask uh, a question? Yeah, you, you're showing up n equal to 26. What will happen if it's 160, uh, 26 million? Six convert. Yeah. Oh, uh, how yeah. can we prove that it converge? Huh? How can we prove that it's converge? Yeah. There's many, many functions, so like even if you uh, expand this into fully, it may never converge. So, what is your convergence criteria? Yes. Uh, well, we have tried. Uh, let me show this. Uh, two, ten, eighteen, twenty-six. Ten, eighteen, and twenty-six give you the same cure approximately. So it is our first criteria. But the end criteria is that permissivity and permeability of uh, Rishi and the convergence uh, is giving you the same transmission and reflection through uh, the actual structure. With two layers or ten layers, yeah. there is no way to be completely sure because if you cannot make one hundred modes, two hundred modes, and so on, you have to stop at some moment, and you are not completely, completely sure. Yeah. And my advice is just make some validation that you per your permittivity and permeability are good enough. But if you can return back to this previous slide you were showing to us, what I see that if I'm uh, change it from 2 to 26, your mobility drops down a little bit. Yeah, it sounds logical because in, in this way, medium, I expect the mobility not 1.1, it's 101. Yeah, if you take formula from Pendrio from, from, from my work with uh, stars, not logical, you'll get much smaller values, very thin ones. So if you now very heavy by formula, which can be proved in, in the static limits, yeah? It's, it's definitely much smaller than this one. So this means that in my impression, if you will take say 30, 300, it will be coming closer and closer to it like a real uh, uh, permeability which you can get from, from, from analytics, yeah? Maybe, maybe it is quite a stable now. It is really it's stable in the number of modes in the middle. It's stable in your method. Because you cannot calculate 26 million. If you could calculate that this cheaper can fit 26 million, yeah, it's it's like a step function. If you expand it into Fourier theories, um, uh, you have had some error. Yeah, maybe maybe mm -hmm. you, you are thinking about the different geometry with wrong wires. It is a strip. Uh, you can't be sure about the number. Who cares? Protection of the strip doesn't influence the memory. But uh, model the composition of the a bit different from the But at the end of the day, it's for you. No. You have to sum up all this stuff. And mm -hmm. you never know if it's conversion or not. So you have to be able to look at the corners and other things. So we yeah. have the composition of the, the, the account. Mm. So you think that the permeability should be closer to one? Yeah, I I I would say that this is. Like you may choose a very typical system for which you know what is epsilon and you and test on it. Yeah, and why a medium is very good test uh, when, when you know what is permeability because permeability for round wise it's one minus say a squared by by yes, area squared. But, but it is a rectangular. Yeah, it's for round for round wise. Yeah, for strips you can regularly strip in, into the radius. which you take a bit of the strip divided by four. And in, in, in static limits, it's indistinguishable from round wire in this case. They guess that the permeability will be also more or less similar. But at least you have to test it on something where you know the answer before making a place where something is converged. Well, mm -hmm. but, but uh, in, in the future, transmission will be always fine. Yeah, read uh, Constantin Simovsky's papers. Uh, it's, in, in, in the future, transmission, you will have perfect. All the time. But uh, look here, for the case of n equal to two modes, the green is not good. Uh, this is the dotted line, which is quite separated to the to the real estate structure. This and this. But if you are trying with n equal 26 and we think it has already converged, it is very similar. Yeah. It's, it depends on oh, what, what, what is your what is your conversion is very bad. You can take a look for my for, for, for me converge is uh this, this is your error of uh identification of permeability. Yeah, permeability is very close to one. So for me, it's at 1.1 or 1.01. It's important. 
Yeah, but these numbers, changes of the mobility by 10%, will not influence your patterns. Okay? Your criteria right, so is that reflection and transmission is okay. Yeah, but my criteria is that the psilocybin and you I identified correctly. Maybe it's worth trying to check if it's really can something they you know the final answer. Then you know test your, your proposal for convergence, yeah, you know, and it gets the final answer. Yeah. Yes, I'll just check yeah, that the round of ones. Yeah, for example, you can check the round of ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will try it. And it would be very nice to see the dependence of estimated error from the number of moves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the, also, it is now uh, easy task. It has a lot of uh, work. Which kind of error? Then you have to define the error. Yeah, exactly. You, you can compare the result with itself for different numbers. If you can compare with more than Yeah, we, we were thinking how to define the error, but uh, we found it is enough to, to observe the cubes because uh, once they are very close together, it is enough. You can define something. <laughs> They're still close, but they go slowly, slowly logarithmic in Yeah, and it's not a very good. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, let me, let me, let me continue with, uh, with the next sample because we have three more samples. Okay, let's move to, to another example with the cocoa geometry that we have tried for making Hagen's metasurface. Um, but uh, I think it can be used also to, to design a, a, a left handed medium mesh in three space. Maybe it is not very interesting nowadays, but uh, it's important what I think. Uh, the thing is that uh, for some specific uh, chip between the two rings in the, inside this unit third, uh, we can get the same uh, value for electric and magnetic diodes. They will be uh, much one each other. Uh, at some specific uh, situation, uh, we will get a permeability equal to permeability, and then we expect the structure is a much degree space. Well, I'm not going to, to tell the details of how this structure is working. I want to concentrate in the in our method to predict permittivity and permeability. Uh, all I'm going to say is that it is designed to be matched. And now we are going to check if it is well matched or not. More or less, it is well matched, but not exactly. So here are the parameters of the geometry, basically 10 by 10 millimeters in X and Y. And 20 millimeters, uh, you, you can see that how the dimensions are not proportional to the real ones. Uh, 10 by 10 and 20 along the theta direction. Now, uh, this is a attenuation constant. There is some left handed band in, in the middle. It is uh, basically in between 3 and 4 gigahertz but actually between 3.3, 3.6 gigahertz, relatively narrow left-handed band. And this is the attenuation constant. So at the, there is some big attenuation at the borders of the left-handed uh, band. The left-handed band is marked here in some pink color, uh, but there is some stop bands around, uh, which belongs to range of frequency in which permittivity and permeability has different sign. Uh, we were trying to get the same permittivity as permeability, but uh, it is not, they are not exactly the same. And in some very narrow range of frequency or very sharp, uh, the sign of permittivity and permeability are not the same. Then there is some stop bands, uh, which are concentrated here and here, two small stop bands. And in the middle, we have the, the 100 million band. Uh, well, here you have the phase constant, beta, or this is the dispersion relation. Uh, in the middle part, you can observe the typical uh, dispersion relation for the 100 million with negative slope. Uh, you see how eigenmodes are receiving us the same result as our method. Uh, in this case, maybe it is worth to mention that uh, when you have positive attenuation constant, 
which is for the for the black solid line. The black one is representing the, the wave propagating along flat feet in positive direction. It means that attenuation has be had to be in the positive direction. The wave is attenuated along plus theta. If you should wave that attenuate along plus theta, then you have to be careful and take the black line in the dispersion relation. So the black line corresponds to waves traveling in the positive direction, the gray line in the negative direction. Well, uh, now we can see also the impedance. Actually, if we have our definition of the impedance, we are expecting impedance equal to minus one. But it is depending on our own definition of impedance. Uh, in the, for some other definition, impedance could be plus one instead of minus one. Uh, from zero to three gigahertz, and even a little bit about. Uh, this is a conventional material with a positive uh, refraction index. Nothing like the 100 million. The 100 million is concentrated in this big rate. Big rate. Uh, and my claim is that this refraction is quite well matched with free space. It should be one instead of minus one for some people. But as I told you, it depends on the definition of the internet that you are using. I was using a uh, E equal theta by H. We are working with Y polarization. So E Y and H X for a wave propagating around the theta direction in the positive sense. E Y is positive when H X is negative. So that's why we are getting a negative impedance. But uh, in some other definitions, it could be positive. And it is not exactly minus one, but it is near minus one. Actually, with a resonant structure, it's very difficult to get a perfect match. Uh, if you want to see the, the left-handed region, which is the, the pink one, you can see this impact. Uh, what the kind specific frequency for which the, the impedance is very well matched to free space, which is more or less like here, and then some uh, variation from minus. 1.5 to minus 0.5. So the, the matching is not perfect, but uh, approximately good matching, I think. This is permittivity and permeability. Permittivity is in blue, permeability is in red. You see how there is some ratio of frequency where they go very similarly. The, the paths are very similar. Uh, in this instance, you can see even the, the differences. They are not perfectly matched, one each other, but approximately. If you see the, this picture, maybe it's better. But, well, to be honest, it is not perfect. Uh, and this is the imaginary part of permittivity and permeability. They are also similar. And I was thinking that maybe we could make also a uh, medium with epsilon and mu equal zero. If you see the frequency 3.56, uh, you have permittivity and permeability going approximately to zero. But uh, it is, of course, depending a lot on frequency. If you change a little bit the frequency, the, the values will, will change. But here they are non, non physical anyway in the range, so probably you shouldn't compare them directly. I mean, even if they are close, if they are. Non physical probably doesn't make much sense. Because they cross zero in three parts. So you're converging from active materials to passive and so on. No problem. I will show you how uh, the. Are you worried about the uh, uniqueness theorem? Well, definitely about the causality. Actually, no, actually, we have chosen modes that attenuate in the propagation direction, always. So there is no problem in that direction. You have to think that wave vector is not depending uh, on epsilon or mu separately on the problem. Yeah. So you can, have, you can have imaginary part of epsilon, imaginary part of mu, of whatever sign, as far as 
the attenuation constant is positive for waste propagating around the positive the direction. They do not have the physical sense of uh, average polarizing which is meant to say that you cannot put the subsound on you into Maxwell equation. You can use them only to fit reflection and transmission. You cannot use them for any other purpose. I have a the transmission through layers, layer, yeah, it will be fine. But it's it's not something which you can put in Maxwell equation and say it's now totally mm -hmm. told, for example, radiation of the point dipole then, or like uh, something else. It will not work. Because, well, uh, because what is your problem that the, that the imaginary part of epsilon and mu could be positive or negative in this? In this oh, oh, that doesn't yeah, also, like also, also, there is a problem that, for example, you don't have lot of the material, but you will get negative or positive uh, uh, imaginary part of epsilon and mu, which is not logical because if you don't have lost, it's usually you should have real epsilon and mu. But through reflection and transmission extraction, you can get some imaginary parts there as well. Yeah? So this is always possible for people who used to work with like a local style of English, but this is a block style of English, but something that's mostly says. And they indeed can be any. We've been having a discussion with a about this. <laughs> I can imagine it's what comes <laughs> <laughs> But in principle, I think there is no big problem because uh, for passive materials, we are very used to say that imaginary parts to have uh, some sign. For physicist convention, it is positive. And for engineering convention, it is negative. But uh, it is because we usually work with media, with permittivity or permeability, but not both at the same time. Uh, if you have a permittivity, permeability, and, uh, and, and you put them together in the wave number, you have the product epsilon and mu, and then the imaginary part of, uh, of the wave vector is coming not only from epsilon prime or mu prime, no, sorry, imaginary parts of epsilon and mu, but also from real parts. And real parts could be positive and negative. So they could change the role of the sign in the imaginary part. That's, that's what Pablo says. You cannot use them in any situation. It's like you see, you, you try to save mathematically a situation when they are physically non-applicable. Because of course, in, yeah. in fact, in that range, of course, your structure is has a strong spatial distortion. Yeah, but it yeah. cannot be described by only absolute me in principle. Yes, the, the, the thing is that try to put it. You, you get some mathematical functions, that's, but they are purely mathematical. They do not have that physical meaning. There is much of well, so you can use them back and forth. Yes, but the, the only thing that I can make if I want to homogenize is to assume that Faraday's numbers law are true. And if I assume that, I will get that kind of imaginary value in epsilon and mu. I'm getting that from here. Except, yeah, except the case that mu depends on k or epsilon. <laughs> if you assume that mu may depend on k, you will never extract this because it will be transcendental equation and you will never solve it. You'll have multiple equations. You assume that mu is constant with epsilon. And what we should say is so this is something that's wrong here, that they do depend on k. And as soon as they do depend on k, you have some r epsilon and r in mu, yeah, which are, which are k for reflection and transmission and for all other games. But they are not applicable for any other. Yeah, but, how, <laughs> but how can you know the, the dependence on K for the Coco? Uh, I mean, how is it take the minus of the linear yes. uh, code, which extracts epsilon dependent on K, and you will get epsilon on K and do whatever you want. Yeah, so with all periodical boundary conditions, extraction of Mario, so also okay. look, you will get epsilon here when he can share code with you. And you will get epsilon on k with a better k in this case. Well, it could be a way. It will take some time. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think I think model of code is working uh, already quite far than uh, uh, originally. <laughs> <laughs> first, first attempt it was quite slow, but now it's really bad. In fact, we can even uh, argue with your you remember you had some classification in the beginning that I think you, you, you did not mention the whole bunch. Yes, or just there. And 
and also hold by travel analytical authorities. It should claim mm -hmm. not just three approaches, but five approaches. Yeah. Different, different family approach. Uh, but the, the paper has to be finished at some of yeah. <laughs> Well, this is a this is the validation with two or ten layers, two and ten layers. Uh, reflection coefficient, transmission coefficient. Uh, mm -hmm. You see that even for two layers, which is relatively thin structure, it is working quite well. The real structure with the solid line, the the dashed line for the for the homogenized slab. And uh, well, in the case of 10 layers, transmission coefficient has a magnitude the, which is also in good agreement, and in good agreement between a homogenized structure and actual or real structure. And uh, maybe you can see anything in, the, in this phase. Uh, you can see how the agreement is good in this region, this region. For, for this uh, relatively dark region, we have this film, this two between three and four gigahertz. You can see how the agreement for trade is also very good. In principle, I would say that permittivity and permeability work quite well for this uh, purpose. Uh, in some way, uh, phase is connected uh, with, well, everything is connected with. Uh, Real and imaginary parts of epsilon and mu. Uh, it's difficult for me to think that uh, that they are not well calculated. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they are well calculated given the, the condition which you assign. And, and of course, mathematically, it is all perfect. The question is what is the physical meaning? And there is another story. So your, your impedance is, is brilliant, the calculator, and your weight number is brilliant, the calculator. And you, based on impedance and big number, can calculate all the flash and transmission, but they have no relation to cell mu at all because it's a trick. Yeah, so if you assume that impedance is mu square root of mu divided by epsilon, but in the same way, you were able to say, oh, epsilon, right, but you, and this is the way how you introduce epsilon and mu. Yeah. And then both epsilon and mu, which are introduced this way, they're completely correct. Yeah, yeah. But they are not the epsilon and mu, which you get from homogenization of real material. They're uh, different. Well, actually, so different point. Point. yeah, but, uh, but it is difficult to, to make a uh, uh, real homogenization when you are close to the border of the different form. You see the problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Moreover, our exile and, uh, and mu depending on K, they cannot be used for no problem. They cannot be used to solve boundary problems because they require additional boundary conditions. Yeah, you're correct. But they, they, they're different, yeah? And uh, the, the, the ones which are not being used for boundary problems, they will fulfill energy cons conservation, other things and so on, but they cannot be used for boundary problems. <laughs> Yeah, but they, uh, they one time you can be used for about the programs. Then when the time operates, then well, no, but but it's more like, like you see, Juan, you are starting from two linearly independent functions. Then you simply select two other functions and describe those on the basis of the two different ones. Then, of course, it always works because it's conversion from one mathematics to another mathematics. But what we are discussing, if, if there is any physical sense, which is classically attributed to those parameters. And in some situations, they coincide, some situations, they do not. So they will always give you a correct picture, but this is just because mathematics works both ways identically. Well, we have to go further. <laughs> and I have to, to show you two, two examples, two more examples. So this structure we made of patches, metal patches. In this case, it is a quite a, a strongly coupled. I mean, the, the patches are strongly coupled. Then I will need many, many modes for modes. Uh, let me show you here the attenuation constant. It seems that there is some convergence for 10, 18, and 26. But uh, it is seen from the attenuation constant and the dispersion relation. But actually, if we take a look on the interest, 
it is not that uh, easy to get convergence. I don't know why in this specific case, uh, apparently we have some good convergence uh, for relatively few number of all modes, but if we see the, the impedance right here, uh, well, there is some convergence up to 10 gigahertz, but, uh, but bad convergence up to 20 gigahertz. Uh, we need much many modes, uh, in this case, we well, not uh, uh, something like millions of modes, but with 138 and 162, you see this curve here. Apart of uh, this kind of resonant behavior uh, at 18 gigahertz, uh, there's very good uh, agreement between the red and gray curves, except for this point. Uh, so I would say that if you go to 162 uh, for modes, more or less you, you go to the convergence. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, there is no, uh, there is nothing in, in going uh, beyond 10 gigahertz because the unit cells start to be uh, electrically big. Then uh, homogenization is uh, not uh, possible, I think. But anyway, the, the mathematics is giving you some convergence if you use many, many more. Let me show you some interesting thing. Uh, there is a fair mode. Sometimes you find a Fourier mode which has new or zero uh, macroscopic field. You have to, to put them uh, in the trash because they are not representing uh, some physical mode for me. They are not. I, I was saying some words about uh, how to classify the fundamental block modes that I, would, I should keep. I have many eigenstates with, uh, I will take the, the two ones with the lowest attenuation constant. I said something about that. But I have to be careful of uh, uh, taking apart the spurious modes for which uh, the average field is equal to zero. Okay, and in this case, it is happening to us. We have a third mode in the dispersion relation, which is uh, drawn here with the dash lines. Solid line is for the first and second modes, which are the fundamental ones for us. You can see this field monitor with electric field. In this case, the average of the electric field is not zero. A magnetic field is also not zero. But in this case, uh, charges, you can imagine positive charge here, negative, negative and positive. And the average of electric field is equal to zero. Also, the average of magnetic field is equal to zero. It is not important for me. So, sorry, one, one more question about these modes. Uh, you are telling that you, you take modes with the lowest attenuation constant, but if you, if you plot them uh, along a real axis and you arrange them along interesting real values, it takes square, square values of these propagation constants. Uh, do that, does your choice correspond to the maximum required value of the application? A real value. Uh, I think yes. Because the, the, this is the way how it is done in, in optical diffraction gradient. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't have an answer. Another question. You said that we pick between the two modes, which uh, Okay, so all other modes with attenuation constant, right? We are picked with the, with the lowest complex. Have you found it something like when the attenuation constant is very close? I mean, like you have this closed one, and the next one closes to this one, it's like very close. So, what, what yeah. would you do? Uh, I don't mean like confuse the error of the method or something like that. I right? think we were lucky for these examples. Uh -huh. um, this was uh, the, 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 the the, the most strange thing that we found is school is small, but the weak attenuation constant, it was always the same story. Or very big attenuation constant, or not so big. Okay, they so were, you they were the really well separated. I don't know why, but for the structure we studied, uh, it was quite easy to, to, to forget for many modes because the attenuation constant was uh, something like alpha multiplied by period uh, greater than. Pi, 
Okay. It means that the wave is going to be attenuated before one unit cell is mm -hmm. uh, uh, crossed. So it's like you... so the the physical ones, this physical in between quotes, was not so attenuated. All right, I see. So you, you, for instance, in, in the plasma, in the plasma structure, uh, you have attenuated uh, attenuated mode, but not so attenuated. Okay. I see. You, you, you never had like two clones modes that have clones attenuation. Not in our sample. Okay, but it right. could happen. It could happen. That's what it I'm could happen, and then I don't know if it's yeah. already fair to. And you have to forget for something. Yeah, I already somehow go into the demonstration. I guess. Yeah, my 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 point is uh, from the beginning. If there is some meaning in this equation, in this Helmholtz equation. I'm expecting only two fundamental modes. Yeah, exactly. But if there, there's more than two, then you have to, you know, that, that's some sort of a... Oh, well, well, yeah, we have to say that it is not true. It's well, always no, not a good question. It's still a system. You still can deal with that. It's always a defined system. You still can work with the always defined system. Yeah, right? uh, with several permeability tests or, or permeability tests. Well, yeah, you have less... Because uh, I will have to choose uh, a couple uh, of uh, of eigenstates and with this couple I will get permittivity and permeability. With another couple I will get different permittivity and permeability. But, but you can do this like for that the uh, when, when the uh, rank of your system is larger than the number of unknowns, so you can do this like for the, the name yeah, the like the the So single yes, single very minimize the error. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can still do the same trick. So even if you, what my point is that this method will probably work, even if you will take into the consideration more than just like two modes. So what you're trying to do is just you're trying to uniquely solve this. Mm -hmm. and then if you include more modes into this in consideration, you can get yeah, into the measuring right. competition, right? And then like, still get pretty the same uh pretty the same step, like mm -hmm. in the uh, specific case of the two modes. The more modes can give you a bit more information. Better way to average their average. Yes, but then we, we will have also to give the, the estimation of the error in permittivity and permeability. Um, no, probably, but I guess it should. I mean, it's, it's, it's doable. Quite certainly, it's doable. Thank you. Okay. So, so, again, about the spurious modes, it's, it seems weird because because if you solve the block equations, right, for search modes, you get some complete model basis. But in the video, but if, if you are, but then the model happens. This mode happens. We find the mode. So, yeah, yeah. If you if you get get it away, then then you lose uh, his information. Your, your basis is no 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 more complete. Very simple thing. There is one that you don't know. It can never be explained. Uh, 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 express the structure. So of course, it's nice that it's excluded by seeing you know, the move that's visible that's longitudinal. Yeah. So in my application, do not correct longitudinal rate at all. Because uh, equation for longitudinal rate of psi will equal to zero. It yes. depends on the second case. So these are the right modes to be excluded because they are wrong for transfer or they live in longitudinal world. It, it, it's, it's, it's strange that <laughs> <it's> wrong <laughs> the initial problem of formulation you get longitudinal modes. Uh, but this is real modes for the scratch. They exist there. Yes. Yes. It's a yeah, it, it exists, but uh, it is hardly exciting in conventional situations. You can excite this with uh, some uh, near field proof, very, very near to the structure, but it is hardly exciting. It's impossible to excite it. I think the initial, yeah, initial statement of the problem allows for the existence of this type of game. So, uh, okay, the problem of the convergence. Uh, finally, uh, this is the permittivity. Uh, we were expecting some high value of permittivity. For the case of n equal to and chain paper, uh, also a Smith paper is giving us the same. Uh, we get the, some wrong number, which is uh, below the real number. We were expecting something near 60. 
Well, we don't have any uh, exact formula for effective permittivity, but we have a good uh, easy approximation and we were expecting something near 60. And actually, uh, our result converts to, to something very near to the permittivity we were expecting. Uh, I'm not showing 10, 18, because those cases are just overlapping with this line. So if I show it, uh, they will be just behind. Uh, for all the cases, for imaginary power of permittivity also, and for, for permeability. And which component of permeability that is, is the, the one in the plane? Uh, in this case, we, uh, we wrote transverse component because yeah. x and y axis are the same. It's but the, the, degree. One, the one which is orthogonal. It is not clear. But it's only transverse components. The method can give you only the transverse right. components. If you want to get a theta component of permittivity, then you will have to rotate yes. the geometry inside the unit or maybe the ports. But that's an interesting separate question because here we probably should expect it to normal permittivity will be by the skew structure. Probably see. Yes, normal permittivity will be equal one for this case. Permittivity. But normal permeability is going to be very small. The normal permeability is very small. We know we know from different calculations, but not this way. Well, if you return back to dispersion, uh, yeah, over here, what is this mode with the top band at 14? So, uh, yeah, what is it? This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a spurious mode, which is propagative. Uh, about there is something near the kind of flight line, and there is something else. So it's the yeah, same spirit, yeah? Yes, it is a spirit, but, uh, but, but not something. Uh, 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 with the idea of something is real, yeah? Yes. Because it's, maybe it's something is in the top band from 0 to 13. And it's yeah, there, there, uh, there is some propagation of that spurious uh, mode. Uh, about 14 gigahertz. Yes, okay. it is propagating in this pressure. Actually, uh, you cannot eliminate that spurious mode uh, with, the, with the idea of choosing the lowest attenuation constant. You have to see the average of electric magnetic field. They are zero. Then you put it in the brush because uh, the average are zero. No, because uh, because the attenuation constant is equal to zero. You, you cannot uh, <laughs> remove that mode uh, because of that. Okay, then let's move to the, well, this is the, the validation. In this case, with two layers, uh, it is not giving us good agreement. With 10 layers, with, with 10 layers, the agreement is very good for the case you are using n equal 26. n equal 2 is never good agreement. But for 26 four modes, we are getting good agreement. You can see here. But in the case of two layers, the story is different because uh, the metallic patches are, are very covered. And imagine that you have only two layers. Most of the metallic patches are in between free space and the periodic medium. No of them is well inside the peri periodic medium. So it is a bad approximation to say that they are behaving like uh, patches that are well inside a periodic structure, infinitely periodic structure. So in this case, the, the approximation is never working. Even if you increase the number of modes more and more, you will not get the, the actual curve, which is the, the, the solid, this, uh, this solid line. But this is because uh, actually all patches are very near to the end of the structure. And no of them is very well inside, okay? Now let's move to, to a different case. If you put the patches uh, more far, uh, then it is possible to, to get convergence much faster. Uh, when you put the patches far, uh, the coupling is the reduced, and then the, 
the convergence is obtained even for n equal to, as you can see. And then uh, in the case of, uh, in this case also, we have good agreement. The validation is working for transmission and reflection coefficient. And I will move to the to the last example with the with the cubes you mentioned. Uh, well, this is the unit cell. Uh, the cube is made of aluminum. There is some dielectric around. Uh, we took the same numbers as uh, you use in your paper uh, with uh, the same permittivity. There is some host permittivity, which is around four, and aluminum with losses. This is a uh, the uh, conductivity of aluminum. Now, uh, we have observed that the convergence is uh, relatively easy. From n equal to, we have obtained the same attenuation constant uh, that uh, for n equal 26, approximately. There is some difference uh, uh, for, the, for the highest uh, frequency that we try. Uh, this version relation is also very similar for all the cases and similar to, to the obtained with the eigenmost over the TSC. Uh, in impedance, we can see some differences, n equal to uh, seems not very well converged. I don't know why this test with the impedance is always more powerful. You can uh, normally you need to go to higher value of n. To, to get the, the convergence in the impedance than the convergence in the dispersion relation. In any case, uh, we got the, I think we got some good convergence, and these are the values of the permittivity. Uh, the chain method is giving some not very bad value of the permittivity. Uh, I think we are getting something better. Uh, we have here permittivity, permeability, yeah. Permittivity can be very big, like more than 60, while permeability is much smaller than one. Uh, it was intended to be, the, the aim of that paper was to make a very low permeability, close to zero. And uh, what well, it seems, it is that. And this is uh, the validation. Once again, uh, we try with two layers, slab of two layers, another slab thicker with 10 layers. You see how the agreement is very good. So it, uh, I believe the permittivity and permeability were, were calculated. That's all my conclusions. Uh, we are able to get a complex dispersion relations uh, by using some multimodal transfer matrix method. From eigenvectors, we can get permittivity and permeability. Uh, we did some study of convergence. It was not very difficult to get convergence with relatively few port modes. Uh, our method uh, allowed us to study some structures which are highly packed uh, with a strong coupling between third neighbors. And we have studied uh, four different structures, wave well, medium, some left-handed material based on the cocoa uh, particle. Uh, high permittivity and near near zero material. We believe it can be extended uh, to, to, to the study of uh, um, magnetoelectric coupling, but then we have to, to try different directions of propagation. Let me show you something about this idea. If you have some anisotropic constitutive parameters like epsilon mu and this is over the, the magnetoelectric coupling tensors, like this. Uh, then we can take into account again Faraday's law in this way and Ampere law in this way. Uh, now we can we can join the, the two equations, Faraday and Ampere law, in this way. And now we could uh, test three different directions of propagation and two uh, polarization states. Then you have six columns like this. It is only one column. But imagine for one polarization, the second polarization, then you have two. And then you can rotate the position of the ports. And then you will have six. If you put six columns and six columns, and you consider this is a thick by thick matrix, as far as 
it is not a cellular matrix. You can invert the matrix and then try to get the whole uh, constitutive parameter test. Like this. Okay. Uh, two polarization states for, let's say, uh, two plane waves traveling around the x direction, y direction, and theta direction. If you forget for the spatial dispersion, if this is all you need to do, <laughs> if there is a spatial dispersion, uh, this method cannot work. But without the spatial dispersion, uh, uh, we can assume that those parameters are not depending on k. And then uh, all we have to do is invert this matrix and then show this one. And we could have the, well, this is uh, more explicit, the same idea, but more explicit. We could solve the, the whole matrix. Well, two, two comments. First comment is that what published by Andrea Wu is by the subtropic extraction back to the graph. So, we need the multimodal transfer matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything? Yes, yes. We can start. I, I, I remember it was Andrea. I discussed with him. It was really about by an assumption. It's one thing. Yes, yeah, so if you, I will help you to find the paper. Second thing, but the was about about there was bad, but I think he was yeah. not trying with heavy to the matrix. Oh, maybe, maybe. I, I, I think it's more. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know very paper which is very, very close to this because we discussed with Andrea. But let's do from the thing. But, but, but only with propagative modes. Yeah, probably. I know that paper. Oh, you know. All oh, oh, right. Yeah. But another thing which I wanted to ask you, if you know the paper, is uh, in your case with the P E zero zero and P and zero zero in the language of this presentation. Okay. He was trying those two modes. All right, for right. two modes. Yeah, yeah. But I'm trying many modes. Yeah, yeah. My, my question is actually the cover. Yeah. So your experiment in you depends on everything. Yes. So you told that there is no special dispersion. Then maybe it will work. Uh, can you try to do the this? Uh, this thing, for example, you have one of your samples. Yeah. And in certain orientation, you're getting some epsilon and mu. Can you detrate? Your own unit style. Again, if your method extracts of style in the U, are you sure that if your own method for the same component of epsilon and the U for the same geometry, but the data you will get the same epsilon and the U? I, I, I'm not quite sure. So, depending, when you told that you will rotate unit cell. Yes. I'm not but, quite sure if you rotate unit cell a little bit, but you're again you targeting the same. Component of Excel, you will get different different numbers. I have the same doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same doubt. I I expect that uh, it is not going to happen when homogenization is possible. Uh, if there is some a spatial dispersion, uh, well, uh, maybe homogenization is not possible. Or maybe you say that homogenization is different, but possible. <laughs> but if there is no a uh, special dispersion, or it can be neglected, and homogenization is possible, both things at the same time, uh, I I don't expect uh, I, I would not expect a uh, different values of primitivity and primarity. But uh, as far as uh, special dispersion can be neglected. Yeah. If it is not possible, uh, I will notice because I am going to get different numbers. When I change the direction of propagation, it will change uh, also the, the weight vector. So I, I will notice that epsilon and mu are different if this version relation. So spatial inspection is present. Well, it's brilliant. Well, the only problem here is that the mobility which you're getting in this artificial media, it's already especially dispersed quantity, yes? So these are not magnetics. At low frequencies, they do not have any magnetic responses. So magnetic response of the structure, it's already second order special dispersion. So unfortunately, you cannot avoid special dispersion because by definition, you already have magnetism, artificial magnetism. It's already special dispersion. <laughs> So yeah. right any attempts, I mean, in, in real material, with real asylum, in real material, it will definitely work. But in artificial matter material, as soon as you have any permeability or by anisotropy, they already affect by anisotropy, it's first order second but, huh? but uh, what happened with the case of the of the cubes? 
Uh, yeah, it should it should be checked. It may be but they they very thematically uh, yeah. the symmetry cuts. Yeah, in, in huge symmetry prevents all, all the things. But basically, this view it's not because of any magnetic properties of the material. It's because of the special dispersion. In this sense, you cannot avoid. Yeah, I'm try trying to trigger the words right now. Yes, the material is local and has no special dispersion. And, and the material will work. I'm saying that this material can never be. Uh, uh, in the case of the patches, I the patches, I was solving a magnetostatic static approximation with the patches mm -hmm. to demonstrate that permeability. Is much smaller than free space permeability. And I was using only magnetostatic equations without the special dispersion. Yes, magnetostatic equation. And I can provide you the right number that simulations are giving me for permeability uh, along the. Yeah, uh, I mean, let me maybe go back to the geometry. It is not here, but the, the, the permeability along the theta axis is very small also for this extraction with the yeah, And I can get that permeability from a magnetostatic equation. Yeah, from but, yeah. Materials. But, but where, 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 where is the spatial dispersion there? There is no way back to the magnetostatic. Yeah, yeah, but it's not that. I can get You, you solve this for ideally conductive material. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is, this is the trick. So this is the case when uh, for ideal conductive materials, this this point comes to the zero frequency. So as soon as you put any conductivity into the material at low frequencies, you will see no magnetics because of the skin depth effect and other things. Yeah. So only for superconductive cues you will get this at zero frequency. For any real material, zero frequency, you have no cue. So the one as for copper. Other things, aluminum, and so on. Unfortunately, it's like yeah, we can make a server with the lab. We have some on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you see, you see, you see, it looks like local. It looks like you saw that the static, but for ideally conducted materials. And yeah. what you imagine, what of high frequencies, when they're ideally conducted, it looks like you, 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 you can solve it. But if I solve the right approximation of theta permeability with my metastatic equations, why not to say that it really found sense? Yeah, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. I was just trying to yeah. make it works. Then you were saying, so if you have completed the local material, then you, from this bioanisotropy approach, you don't get everything. And I'm trying to tell you that most of this media you were showing. They, they never can be treated as local. It's very, very small frequency ranges where they can be treated as local. Because you have magnetism, and magnetism is already second purpose. Everyone is silent. Like sorry for that. They can do a three sum and then continue. I'm <laughs> 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 